Hey, I'm Stephanie Yang with the Nocturnal, and we're here at the 2020 Writers Guild Awards. We're about to talk to some incredible writers, directors, and special guests here on the red carpet. Hi, I'm with John, who's here hosting tonight's Writers Guild Awards. How do you feel about being here tonight? Uh, it's a tremendous honor to be here with some of the most talented, least hateful people in all of Hollywood. And who are you excited to see the most tonight? Like, what series excites you the most? Wow, that's a good question. There were so many great series for women this year. I mean, from Unbelievable to uh, The Handmaid's Tale. Uh, and then so many great films with women characters, including Little Women. I mean, I'm thrilled Greta Gerwig is nominated tonight. I think, uh, let's be honest, after the Oscars, the Oscars need Greta Gerwig more than she needs the Oscars. So I'm th thrilled to see uh, such great representation for so many women artists. And also Noah, her competition is also here. <laughs> yes, that's right. Noah is here tonight. That's going to be interesting. Right after the impeachment ends and, and marriage story, it's like the same thing. It's like, what, you're, you're crying that the impeachment turned out this way? Didn't you know how this movie ended? We knew how this was going to end from the beginning, people. Come on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I love marriage story. For me, that's a light comedy. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to see who turns out tonight and, uh, and to see Ryan Johnson as well, because Knives Out is brilliant. And I've got a few questions about Star Wars. I've Episode 8 I need to upset him with, so hopefully we'll see what happens. Is there anything else you like that? Honestly, it's like such a crazy time in our country. We are so divided. People are at each other's throats. I don't have to tell you this. It's depressing. It's like Ingmar Bergman made the Star Wars prequels. So to come here and honor the writers who helped keep America sane last year is a great honor for me. Hi, I'm here with Amber Ruffin from The Late Night with Seth Meyers. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? You look so great. We were just talking about it. Love the colors. Thank you. How is it writing for um, Seth Meyer? Writing at late night is extremely doofy. Um, we goof off a lot and then we write it down, basically. Um, it is a ton of fun. How do you feel being nominated tonight? Um, being nominated is always um, great. It, it, it's more that we all get to see each other outside of work and then we all get to have a couple drinks and eat like a burger together. That's really the fun part. And then your friends go up and present awards and you get to see their bits and that's always fun. So yeah, there are awards, but that's like the last part. And you just did an Anita Baker tribute to Andrew Yang. It was so hilarious. Oh, can, you, you. can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I follow Anita Baker on Twitter and I would in real life if she was close to me. Um, and I saw that she supported Andrew Yang and I just thought you would never have guessed that. So um, yeah, one of the writers, um, Matt Goldich said, you know you should sing Sweet Yang instead of Sweet Love. And I said, yes, I absolutely will. And then I wrote it up. That's amazing. I'm with Tim Greenberg with Living With Yourself, the writer. How are you doing tonight? Good, excellent, thank you. I love your series. It's so incredible. How was working with Paul Rudd? He's great. He's just like he seems on TV. He's a wonderful guy. Yeah. What was your inspiration um, for writing this series? Uh, I, you know, I don't. I, I've had this idea in various forms over the years. Like literally, when I found out on the day that I found out I was nominated for this, I was celebrated by going to a storage room and emptying out this old storage unit that I'd had, and I found a thing from like. The first semester in college, I took the science fiction writing class, and I basically wrote the same idea in this class, like however many years ago that was. So clearly it's been kicking around for a long time, so. I mean, it's great. It's like Paul Rudd's a clone of himself, and yeah. it's like deja vu over and over again. It's crazy. Yeah. So how do you feel about being nominated tonight? Great. I mean, um, I was saying to Paul, I feel like the WGA Awards are like the Nerd Awards, you know, which is the, the one you really want because, you know, it's, it's about the writing and it's about sort of the most purest form of the storytelling before all the production headaches get in the way. Um, so yeah, I'm like actually really thrilled, yeah. How does it feel um, to see your writing come to life on the big screen? It's good. I mean, look, I was the showrunner, so in whatever ways it, it, it fell short and I'm quite happy with it but in whatever ways it wasn't exactly what I wanted it's my own damn fault but um, 
it's it's uh, in some ways the writing is the most fun. I forget who it was that says like, you know, the best version is when you finish the writing, and then it's just trying to keep it together after that. Although I will say. Everybody brings something to it, and Paul was incredible, so he certainly made a lot of scenes that weren't that great <laughs> work a lot better. So. Can we expect a season two? I, t I literally don't know. Um, there's a few. Paul's busy. I mean, there's certainly a desire for it, but whether we can get all of the kind of ducks in a row at the right time, we'll just have to see. Well, I'll definitely be looking out for it. I'm with Tim Blake Nelson from The Watchmen. I love your character in this series. Thank you. How can you tell me about a little bit about your character? Oh, on The Watchman, yeah. I play Looking Glass. Uh, he's a detective in psychological ops, and he has uh, eccentric methods for determining whether people are telling the truth or lying. And you have such an iconic costume. How do you deliver such a great performance without seeing your face? Well, sometimes you see my face. Uh, and um, actually, as the season goes on, you see more and more of it. And, um, I, you know, I, it's all an interesting challenge. Uh, I had to rely more on the voice and movement. What do you like most about your character in The Watchmen? Uh, he's um, a nuanced, kind of stratified character, a lot of different layers. And I love how Damon Lindelof and the writers meted out information about him very slowly over the season. So he's got a lot of mystery to him. You wrote, produced, directed, and starred in the show. How was yeah. doing it all at once? Yeah, 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 that definitely happened. Uh, it was wild, uh, and uh, I'm currently doing it again. And uh, it's not uh, an easy day at the office. Uh, some days I think maybe I should have brought the, some sort of an ice cream truck and ran around, and then I could have heard that song play all day. And, made the kids so happy uh, with the ice cream cone. But instead, uh, I chose <laughs> this. I'm uh, immensely grateful. And uh, last night I did hear uh, the birds chirp in the morning. Uh, I was still up, clacking away. But luckily, everybody else was home. And I was, you know, home uh, in bed, writing, hoping, and praying that uh, we're able to give these ravenous beasts what they crave. I mean, people are animals. They are not. They love. They love to build you up and rip you down. But we're really determined not to let them. Um, you know, just trying our best to kind of tell the truth and something original. And uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of work, and it's been going pretty great. And it's uh, very special and things. So I'm very grateful. I absolutely love Pose. Everything about it. You play such a fierce role. What was that like for you? Well, at first it was very difficult because I didn't want the world to look at me as an evil person because, you know, I, I just don't think I am. But it was also amazing because I was getting to realize all of the history that I was able to bring to television through some amazing writers and Mr. Murphy and FX who have really like said to, to the world, look, these people exist and we're going to give them platform, we're going to give them light, we're going to give them so much. Pose has the largest transgender cast. How does it feel about breaking down the barriers in the TV series? Well, we are supposed to break barriers, especially when you're as fierce as, as, fierce as we are, right? And it's that we're showing that we are resilient. We're showing that we're perseverant and determined to not just take over or anything like that, but to just get, have the same rights, to have the same abilities and opportunities that everyone else has. And how was working with Billy Porter? Billy is amazing. It, it's really amazing to see someone who has really put in the work for so many years, has been denied so much, and his story is just so amazing. And you'll see a lot of those stories come through, especially in the LGBTQIA plus community, you know, where we have to struggle to get to where we want to be. As a trans woman of color, for me, it was always a struggle, always a struggle, and at times it still is. You know, we were writers, we wear a lot of hats, literally and figuratively, and we were writers first, we, you know, so like, the first union card we got was the Writers Guild card, so we have a particular uh, connection. Um, this is my favorite awards because it's in New York and we get to stay home. Yeah, we get to do that. We get to do it at home, in our hometown, so we're very happy about that. Yeah. I absolutely love Mrs. Maisel. 
It's from the costumes to the music. It's just so entertaining. So how does it feel being nominated tonight? It's great. I mean, it, it really is, you know, like Dan said, you know, we started as writers. Um, we, you know, our, our lives were filled with, you know, that odd smell of what that writer's room turns into after like a week that you can't quite put your finger on why it smells like that, but it's a very specific smell. And uh, and it, it's just, um, you know, our, our, our world started that way. I think we always think that way. And um, so to be here, to be honored by the Writers Guild, it's sort of like, you know, this is, this is, this is where it happened for us. Did you expect Mrs. Maisel to be this big and this huge of a hit? Absolutely. No, I, no. you never know. You, you never know what people are going to like. You, yeah. you put things on the air and you're like, oh, I love this, America, look. And they're like, and click. So, I mean, you just, you never know. When, when we did the pilot, it was one of those things where it came out the way we wanted it to. And that's really all we can really control. Yeah. We thought Rachel was amazing, but literally like you'll go broke betting on like oh everyone else is going to find Rachel Brosnahan's amazing or not like it just you can't predict it so we just do something that we think is really cool that other people will like and then we yeah. cross our be, fingers in the end you just have to be proud of it yeah. how is working with Rachel she's so great on camera she's a nightmare like literally like I just Let's can't be even honest tonight. I mean my god um, she's a she's a love she's a doll she's very professional She's, um, and yet she's very much, because she doesn't come from comedy, you know, she's, she's very much wanting to talk about the jokes, the stand-up, and the, and the, and the, and, 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 and where, how she stands, and where she, where she walks, and when do I take it off the mic, because it's got to all feel right to her, and yet she wants it to feel very authentic and legitimate to everyone. She's great, I mean, I, I, we were blessed with this unbelievable cast, not only in talent, but work ethic. They are all uh, rehearsals people, like they, because they come from theater, so they love rehearsal. So that is, and, and our show, I mean, if we had a bunch of people who were like, you know, I'm just gonna walk through this one and then we'll see what happens, the show would die. Like, it's because it's very precise. Yeah. When outside actors come in, it's like they see what these our regulars are and they, they're like not like, that they oh, would slack off but we're yeah. Island, so. this is a like be on time we don't you know like we're all on the set we're all in of our it actors to... come in mm -hmm. whether they're working or not to do off camera for the other actors mm -hmm. like yeah. that is it's just yeah, it's, a... it's something that I would like to say we made it a rule but we never had to because it's just who they are they're great she's amazing she's adorable her waist is this big but other than that we love her and what inspired you guys to create this series overall? My dad was a comic, so I grew up with stories of Catskills and Greenwich Village and, and all of his comic friends coming over and hanging out and smoking funny cigarettes and um, making each other laugh uproariously for hours. And it was just sort of like, you know, it's it's like if you're if if your dad's in, you know, law, you you know, you like sometimes you become a lawyer, and so you know it's just sort of like it. it it's a, a world that is. It's it's very fluid. It's got a lot of motion to it. It it has a lot of dimension to it. There's a lot of travel in it. So it just seemed like a very exciting place to take a 1950s housewife and like dunk her right in the middle of like the comedy scene. Okay, great. And last question: What can we expect from the next season? We we're don't know. That out. We have no idea. We're, we're trying we're, to figure that we're out. We just started breaking uh, season four. Right? Now you put pressure on us, and now we can't, we can't go go to the awards. We should start spitballing some stuff. Yeah, we got to go home now. See? I mean, you're right in New York, so you can yeah. just get an Uber yeah. home. <laughs> like go sit down with Matthew. Well, we shot when we shot the Miss Julie uh, Broadway show. That was across the street at the Barrymore. Because you could see the Edison Hotel across the street in Jane Lynch's shot. So. Flash of the lights. It's been an incredible night here at the Writers Guild Award on the red carpet. In New York City, I'm Stephanie Yang with The Nocturnal.